Hi right, guys, welcome to part two of the Patriot Ordnance Factory 415 demonstration. Not really a review because I don't want to get into all the parts of this, but just to explain, here's the uh, company. A lot of people don't know about this company. It's uh, it's Patriot Ordnance Factory there in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is the P415. So just to talk a little bit about the rifle, uh, going from the front tip to the back. This is a uh, they're. Um, proprietary muzzled device you can see there's no holes in the bottom but there are holes in the top and some on the on the top there and on the left and right so it actually sends a lot of uh, sound to your neighbors on the range but you can see there's holes on top there and it actually corrects it to down and to the left which is kind of cool the device works really really well I haven't had any issues with recoil management it pretty much wants to come right back on target um, but you will an annoy your range neighbors if you uh, if you shoot with the muzzle device this is a fluted barrel um, you can see that it's it's got these grooves in here and that's for extra um, for cooling and also to reduce the weight of it as well uh, moving on to here this is a piston AR and if you, if you don't know the difference between direct gas impingement and a piston system. It's basically the uh, the original Eugene Stoner uh, M16 or AR15 had a uh, direct gas impingement system, and that's pretty much all the way up to your M4, what most of the AR platforms have. Okay, so there's an, kind of an emerging thing with piston ARs. An AK-47, on the other hand, has a piston system. You can see that silver line. That's actually the piston, and I'll take that out. So what it enables you to do, typically a, um, a regular direct gas impingement AR, um, bullet's going to go out the front end, it's going to send gases back into this area, and then up into a gas tube, which goes all the way back, all the way into the uh, chamber area or the bolt carrier group, and that's what's going to, you know, send pressure back here to recall your bolt carrier uh, group. Um, on the other hand, a piston system uses this little rod, okay? And instead of gas going all the way back into this bulk carrier group and your trigger group and everything else in here, this piston pushes your bulk carrier group, which goes back, gets another round, comes back forward, right? So the way that looks, it, it's what the AK uses and pretty much every uh, modern assault rifle besides the AR-15, for the most part, uses a uh, piston system. The absolute greatest benefit uh, of this, and it will add about a pound to a pound and a half to the weight of the overall weapon. This is about seven and a half pounds uh, by itself. And whereas a direct gas impingement AR might only be about six, six and a half pounds or so. So still very, very lightweight. Um, what the piston allows you to do is it doesn't send all those hot gases and carbon back into the uh, bulk carrier group and into your trigger, trigger mechanisms. And so you have all this carbon buildup in here and all this heat that's being poured into here. And so with the heat, it, it um, slowly deteriorates your parts. I mean, how much is, is questionable? I don't know if there's actually been scientific data on that, but there is no hot gas in a piston AR going back into here. That means that you're not, you're not introducing immense amounts of heat. And the biggest plus is the carbon. You don't have carbon back here. Uh, all the carbon buildup. So I've shot about maybe 250 rounds or so. I did clean it after the range. I went once. Uh, so let's say, to be fair, about 150 rounds uh, through here. And the carbon buildup is hardly anything. I'll actually pull pull the uh, bolt carrier group out here so you can see what that looks like. And pretty much there is almost no carbon buildup whatsoever. Now that's not a whole lot of rounds, but it's extremely impressive. So one of the things you can do is after, right after shooting this thing, you can actually hold this in your hand. You would never do that with a direct gas impingement because all that, like I said, all that hot air is going through that tube and it's gonna make this super, super hot, right? It's also, in addition to that hot air, it's gonna cover everything in carbon. This also has a proprietary roller pin. I don't, actually, I don't think it's proprietary. They actually encourage other manufacturers to use this roller instead of uh, the square pin that's usually found. Uh, if you watch their videos, it's Patriot Orange Factory. You can really uh, just look up a video called The Why on YouTube. And you can really find out a lot about uh, the science behind this. This is 
I think it's called nickel uh, or N, N3M, I want to say. It's some sort of nickel coating. Uh, it can withstand thousands of hours of sea salt. Um, it has a Teflon. It's microscopic. The Teflon actually comes off. They compared it to chunky peanut butter. And as that Teflon comes off, along with some other metal, I can't remember what it is, it's actually self-lubricating. So you never have to lubricate it, and you never have to clean it. Uh, and when Patron Ordnance Factory says cleaning is optional, it absolutely is. You don't have to clean it. Uh, there is some carbon buildup on the front, mainly because I'm using... You can see it there. Mainly because, well, that's the chamber area, but mostly because I'm using Wolf, which doesn't expand. So Wolf has a... Uh, has a steel casing. Uh, a brass casing will expand, fill the chamber, and then it gets ripped out okay, by the ejector. Whereas Wolf does not expand in the chamber, and it actually allows carbon to get into the bulk carrier group here. Um, there's a common misconception that Wolf will, the polymer on Wolf will melt, and that it will cause, that's what causes the, the stickiness and, and jamming issues. It's actually not. It's the carbon buildup in the chamber area which causes uh, failures. So you got to be diligent about cleaning the chamber area. And POF recommends that you clean the chamber area in this so that you avoid difficulty. Now, there's one warning. If you're going to use uh, POF um, and you're using Wolf Ammo, that's fine as long as you stay with Wolf Ammo. But if you switch from Wolf and you go over to Brass, all of that residue, all that carbon buildup in the chamber area, when that brass bullet expands it's going to get stuck on all that carbon deposits. If you just stick with Wolf, since it doesn't expand, yeah, you're going to get carbon buildup, but it's not going to be an issue. So that's the real reason why you should, when shooting a POF, you should never go from Wolf ammo to brass ammo, because you probably will have a stuck case inside the chamber, and then you're done. Uh, then you got to take it home or use a cleaning rod and knock it out of there, and apparently it takes a lot of uh, pressure. So that's just one word of advice. If you're just going to stick with Wolf ammo or steel cased ammo, you're perfectly fine. So not to worry about that. Um, anyway, moving up here, since this is the piston, you, you can actually see it there, that silver. What's cool about this system is you, I don't have to remove the entire upper to actually clean the uh, piston system. All you got to do is take this little knob, you twist it to the, to the uh, left, and then you just pull it out. Okay? And you can see there that there's a lot of carbon deposit. There's a tiny little hole which, if the camera would focus here, there's a tiny little hole right there. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's where the gas goes in. That's all you need. All right, so a lot of ARs that are direct gas impingement are over-pressured, quote-unquote, or they, the uh, pressure acts too long on the bulk carrier group, and, and you get over-pressure systems, especially when you shorten the barrel. So that's a whole different discussion. But... Uh, what I'll do is I'll tilt it forward here so you can see. Let's see if I can pull it out here. All right, guys, so it took me a little while to, to get that out. So the only thing you really have to do is turn that. It'll come out. You can see the carbon there. I already showed you that. Uh, <clears throat> and that sometimes every once in a while, I, took the, I went ahead and took the upper off. There's the lower down there. Uh, Every once in a while, you'll get the the actual rod will get stuck right here. So all you got to do is take your charging handle. Right, I'll show you this. So you just take the tip of your your charging handle here, and you're gonna just push, just put that right in there, and just push it out. That's all. You, it's pretty easy. If it ever gets stuck. And that's just because you get carbon build up in the uh, where the piston is. Alright, so I'll show you what it looks like. So the only three parts you really have to clean are uh, this part here, the actual uh, piston. You can see this is completely covered. I'll just kind of roll it in my hand here. You can see it's completely covered in carbon deposit, okay? But better that the carbon builds up here. This is way easier to clean along with this little thing. And here's the actual rod. The front of this rod's really dirty, too. I'll just wipe it off. But you can see how easy that wipes off.
I just wiped the carbon right off. Um, and I think this is like a stainless steel or something like that. So it's way easier to clean these little tiny pieces every once in a while. And even that, you know, I don't know if, if you even need to clean them. I think the gun will still function because all, all that's happening is that gas is going, you know, through that little hole. It's coming out through there. The gas is hitting this thing, which is then hitting this thing. And then it's pushing the, uh, it's pushing your bolt carrier group backwards, right, so that little thing fits right in there, right, and it's just pushing it back, the uh, spring back here, and you, usually on uh, direct gas impingement, as far as I know, these get really, really dirty, and your trigger group gets really dirty, right, that spring's going to push the bolt carrier group back, which pushes the uh, rod back, and you're, and you're back in business, so it's, it's as easy as that, so this entire assembly all it does is replace the the gas tube that normally goes back there. Now normally you have gas that's going to push back here from the gas tube. Gas is going to come out through here and it's going to throw carbon and hot air and all sorts of deposits all over this thing. Right, not only that, but it's also going to get inside your lower. It's going to get in your trigger group, right? It's going to get probably in the magazine well there. It's going to get back here where there's this um, buffer spring is, right? This is completely clean. Absolutely clean. There's no carbon that I can detect in the uh, trigger group whatsoever. There's no carbon inside the trigger group. Um, nothing at all. This is just absolutely clean and that is amazing for an AR platform. So that's what the piston system does. Now whether you go with Patreon Ordnance Factory or Adam's Arms or uh, Sig, I think, has a, um, <laughs> even though I think they got in some legal issue, you know, legal trouble uh, over their piston design, but, you know, there's a number of pistons coming out, and I think this is the ideal. So my, my kind of philosophy was, so my whole philosophy was that I wanted the absolute best possible rifle that I could get for my money. And pretty much all the top counterterrorism teams you know, whether it's DevGrew, Delta, whoever you're talking about, are running HK 416s, 417s, as far as I know, right? So I, this is how this whole journey started. I wanted to know what was the best AR platform that I could get for my money that was going to last a long time. Um, and the HK 416 is a piston AR, okay? Now, HK 416s, you, you know, if you can even get one, I think they range about $5,000 or something like that. Uh, I heard some rumor that the Marine Corps was switching their M4s to H, um, HK 416 lowers. That may or may not be true. But uh, it is a, you know, very reliable company, awesome, you know, engineering and ingenuity. And they needed to make something for top tier uh, counterterrorism groups that was performed better than a normal. Uh, M4 platform and the number one upgrade to this entire system is the, the piston system now there's a civilian version of the HK it's an MR556 I think I think they also have like a 762 variant but that that'll run you probably four thousand dollars or maybe five thousand I, I don't know um, so Patreon Ord Ordnance Factory has very high standards if you look at the Y video you'll know exactly what the process of every single component of this weapon and what it goes through and it really is uh, remarkable but it is a probably a Ferrari of ARs uh, I actually got a really good deal on it it's probably a uh, retail value is about twenty two hundred dollars I got it at Bud, Bud's gun shop for about sixteen hundred so it's an expensive rifle uh, but it certainly is the best that you can get I wanted something that could last for you know a long time and the um, when I when I researched piston guns, first I needed to know what was the difference between direct impingement and and piston, and, and why were AK so reliable. Well, the piston system doesn't make the AK reliable, but it actually makes it so you don't have to clean it. All right, that's the most important thing. Uh, I think San Bernardino County Sh uh, Sheriff's Office they have a 308 version of this. They've run something like 62,000 rounds at the time of this video. Um, and they have done minimal maintenance. They haven't replaced any major parts. Like I don't think they've replaced the barrel or the lower or the upper. Um, maybe maybe parts of the bolt carrier group. Maybe the piston system uh, that has gotten you know um, 
damage a, a, after time, but it, it just continues to run. And, you know, I'm not even sure if they've had a, had a failure. I know I, I didn't have a single failure for this weapon. Um, so the main benefit of a piston is not so much the mechanism itself. Um, it's the wear and tear on the bolt carrier group down here and the carbon buildup. The big thing is that you don't have to clean it. Right, so that's why AKs can kind of run and run and run without being lubricated and clean, because they're not dumping all that carbon and hot air into the the most sensitive part of the weapon. It's a trigger group and the bulk, bulk carry group. Some people say that it was a flaw in Eugene's um, design, but I don't think that's true. I think he was very thoughtful. I mean, he made a rifle that that's been in existence for how many years now? Seventy years or something like that. And all we can do is upgrade it because the design is so flawless and so awesome. Um, I shouldn't say flawless, but it, it's, it really is near perfection. Um, so I think he knew what he was doing. The, the problem that we have with M4 platforms and direct gas impingement is really the shortening of the barrel. When the, when the M16 came out, it was a 20-inch barrel, and the direct gas had the exact amount of gas that it needed to push this bulk carrier group back. Uh, now that you're shortening it, shortening the barrel down to, you know, 14 um, 10 inches, 9 inches in some cases. Uh, now you have an op over pressure system that's happening. And so what, what happens is that the bull carry group ends up flying back faster than it was ever intended to. And then you get double feeds and you get um, malfunctions. Um, you get, you know, stove piping, all sorts of stuff because this thing is just flying and you get excessive wear and tear on it as well. What Patriot Orange Factory is able to do is, is regulate the gas exactly to what you want it to be and then uh, you can actually run a suppressed mode on this if you if there's two modes you can go like this or upside down uh, this is the regular mode the smooth side is the suppressed mode if you do run a suppressor it's going to lower the gas amount that goes into the uh, piston it's going to slow this down because it's not going to have as much gas coming back and it's going to slow down the uh, bulk carrier group so you, it's awesome for uh, suppressed weapons anyway that's my POF 415 I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on it uh, this is my first AR platform but I did a lot of research before I got to this point and uh, this and LWRC is also a common company are probably the two best piston ARs that you can get on the market Adams uh, Adams Arms also makes one uh, but I think in probably 20 30 years you're going to see probably more pistons than direct gas impingement. That's my theory. <laughs> I don't know if it'll actually happen, but the number one benefit is you don't have to clean it, um, the wear and tear on the mechanism. And for coolness factor, you can do over the beach stuff. Like you can literally uh, pull it out of the water and instead of draining the uh, gas tube, you can just shoot it right away. So obviously Navy SEALs would have a need for a function like that to be able to uh, surface from the water and be able to shoot right away. And there's a demonstration video with the HK416 that you can look up. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.